So today, we get to talk about the devil fish. If you guys don't know what the devil fish is, we're gonna learn about it a little bit. A little bit creepy, a little bit scary. It's like a, kind of a cool tale and mythology. And uh, after coming across it and like learning about it, I've sort of come to the conclusion that it may not be totally mythological. So unlike my normal videos where I spend time uh, trying to prove that things that people think are real aren't, I think actually there's legitimate explanations for this. Now, obviously not to like the extreme <laughs> here. So the first thing is what the fuck is the devil fish? It is a Taiwanese urban legend about a fish which has a, a human, not, not always described as a human face, but just another face coming out of the side of its body. A bunch of people, like someone catches this fish, serves it for dinner. Someone comes over, like a witch doctor comes over and is like, yo, you should not eat this because there's a face on the side of that fish. And everyone's like, okay, fine. And so he like puts it away or whatever to study and his daughter cooks it for dinner. And then she becomes an immortal like demon and lives for 800 years. And I know you're thinking like, how the fuck are you basing this in realism now? But there's actually some interesting things that I think uh, should be said. So first of all, the main way that I wanted to learn about this and so it's pretty hard to find things that aren't in Taiwanese. But this one thing that I did find is this horror film. Uh, it's part of a series called The Tagalong called The Devil Fish. I've been wanting to watch this now for a little while because I wanted to use it as a basis for research for the video. But it's only available on Netflix if you're from South Korea. And if you guys didn't know, I'm from the United States. So that presents a little bit of a problem. Uh, luckily for me, NordVPN reached out. Uh, so they gave me, as well as you guys, the opportunity to use their VPN service. They basically like let me try the service, use the VPN, and I just set my location to South Korea and then logged onto Netflix and it was just there. So let me show you real quick because it's insane. I didn't think it was actually just like a thing you could do. I thought Netflix would be smarter than this. Turns out they're not that smart. So I literally just open the VPN and then I scroll on the side and click on, I'm not gonna click on it cause it's gonna connect me to it and end stream, <laughs> but I just click on South Korea and it's just like, oh, okay, you're in South Korea now. And then I open Netflix and it's like, oh, hello, welcome to South Korean Netflix. It just believes me. I think that's crazy. Why doesn't it remember? But anyways, it just believes me. And so then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, welcome back. Person who's only ever watched shows from America. Congratulations on being from South Korea now. And so I was able to actually watch the film and do ad research. So you can watch like cool foreign films like this, use it for a bunch of other stuff. They gave me a code, which is AVNJ. It's no risk, 30 days money back guarantee. Uh, I'm not just using it for fish. I actually sat down with my roommate yesterday because he was like, no way, you got a VPN? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I got a, like a VPN with like a sponsorship deal and everything. And he's like, oh my God, bring up Japan. So we went on Netflix Japan and he just like went on his phone and looked up like every good anime that has ever existed. <laughs> and just made me a list of like a hundred animes that I have to watch. So I now have to watch like a hundred different shows that my roommate has created this giant list for me uh, that I can watch now because I have the VPN for, for Netflix Japan. So I'm going to be binging all of those. Also, I play Smash. If you guys don't know, I play Smash Melee and I... For some reason, my school's internet blocks person-to-person -person connections. So you like can't play Smash Melee online on a school, on like the school internet, unless you use a VPN. And NordVPN's fast enough, like the speeds are actually good enough that I can just straight up play Melee online using the VPN. So it's actually pretty sick. So I've just already been using it for a bunch of things. It's incredibly useful. It's a good deal. And they also supported me. The entire reason that this video exists and the reason that I was able to do this research uh, and come to this conclusion that I have is because of the ability to watch this movie, which was of course given by NordVPN. So check them out, check the code out, pretty dope. So lots of folklore, such as the, the you know, the human faced fish uh, is based in myth. You know, a lot of people like look at folklore and say myth, but also there's sometimes where things that are, uh, Things that are based in mythology are, are based in real life. Things that are set in mythology are based in real life. Like for a long time, or just like a recent thing that I've heard is that the Loch Ness Monster, like a lot of the pictures of the Loch Ness Monster were actually just like a whale sticking his penis out of the water. So it's like, <laughs> there's all sorts of, uh, 
of real explanations because if you think about it, it makes more sense that like someone saw something, right? Like people didn't just come home and just make stuff up. Like no one just was like at the lake one day and they're like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say that I saw a monster in the lake, you know? It wouldn't make as much sense. So they tend to be based on something. This is like a, uh, a carp. I think this video went viral a while ago. There's like a whole video and a bunch of pictures of it and it's a carp and like the patterning on the top of the carp just looks like a dude's face. And I'm not saying this is the explanation, by the way, I have a much better explanation than this for the fish with the second face. But I just wanted to point out that oftentimes mythology is based in real life because it is. <laughs> It just makes more sense. Unless you're like on drugs, it makes more sense that you would see something that you misinterpret than that you would, you know, make up as a whole. So the real explanation, this is now my theories. We're past the Taiwanese legend here. This is what I actually think happened. And that is a little condition called bicephaly. So if you guys haven't heard bicephaly, it's pretty, pretty simple. You can see it here. It's basically these, these two headed animals. It's uh, really common in reptiles, but it exists in basically everything. What it is, it's like how conjoined twins happen. Bicephaly, it's like the embryo. When the embryo is splitting, it doesn't split completely and in humans and like other animals that leads to like conjoined twins where they're like connected by a specific organ or something like that but it bicephaly specifically it happens uh where you have two embryos that like an embryo that should separate into twins which instead grows together and the heads are separate so you have like two separate thinking entities attached to the exact same body and it's not like a new thing i've heard i was talking to someone about bicephaly and they were like oh yeah that's like a human pollution thing like we polluted the water and that caused it and it's like okay maybe yeah pollution could make this more common could cause embryos to not split properly but there's fossils of two-headed embryos as far back as 150 million years ago so this is not a, this is not just a human thing this is a thing that occurs naturally in nature when things fuck up though pollution obviously always you know exacerbates existing issues it's most common in reptiles potentially because they reproduce more or because they're more exposed to their environment reptiles interact with their environment via their skin a lot more if you think about like humans if you like pour water or vinegar on your skin you know vinegar is not getting in your bloodstream reptiles aren't exactly like that i mean it's not straight to the bloodstream but they are absorbing the things around them more so if you have a more polluted environment uh, it kind of makes sense that uh, your embryos could get more fucked up if you are a, uh, a reptile. So my theory is actually viable because there are multiple examples of bicephaly in fishes. There are two-headed, or if you wanna call it two-faced fishes, uh, absorb, observed multiple times. This is not necessarily an uncommon thing, though it's most common in reptiles, it definitely exists in fish, right? So what I'm saying is, you could see someone seeing this and calling it the two-faced fish right you could see someone seeing something like this for like a common fish and calling it the two-faced fish and suddenly you've born uh, an urban legend where there's a second fish coming out a second face coming out of the side of another fish and i think that might actually be a reasonable explanation for this myth um and a particularly terrifying example i just wanted to show you uh sheep's head which i actually found some sheep's head during class today two sheep's head um this is a sheep's head from the side, right? This is a sheep's head from the front with their horrible fucked up teeth. Uh, and just as an example, I would like to show you via my own amazing Photoshop skills, what would happen if a sheep's head had bicephaly and that is the sheep's head head. And I would like you to look at this and tell me that that is not a devil fish. So, <laughs> I think it's pretty reasonable that someone saw some shit like this and went, holy fuck, there is a demon in that. Because <laughs> there is no way I would ever find that on the shore and go, that's not a demon. That's a hundred percent a demon. So obviously the whole like demonic thing is exaggerated, but I think it makes perfect sense. I think it's very likely that like a fisherman found a fish with, a, with bicephaly. There's like a second head, a second face tells someone about it and they're like, oh, dude, you know, then someone else takes it too far, but it is based in reality, at least. I want to make the argument that it is based in reality. And also that the movie was pretty good. The movie was actually pretty good. I'm actually glad, in, in addition to just doing research, it was actually cool. And VPN helped a lot, and I've just been using it for a bunch of shit. It's just a cool thing to have. Yeah, that is it. That is the sheep's head head. <laughs> Throw it back to the ocean. Kill it with fire. It's a demon. You can't kill it with fire. Though I will say, if, if the folklore, you know, goes as far as 
if you don't believe the whole demonic part of the folklore, the fact that they ate this is insane. The fact that someone looked at this and went, yeah, this is probably healthy to eat. I mean, like, I know sheep's head are good eating, but goddamn. Basically, this presentation, you thought it was about a devil fish, a fish that was the devil, but no, it was about sheep's head with bicephaly. Whoa.